saved. This is a prayer that we pray because God has uh, blessed us yes. with freedom. He has blessed us with freedom from oppression of the soul. He has set us free. By Christ's death on the cross, we are now set free. And we praise God for that. We now have our uh, prayer, our evening. Good morning, one morning, all. Good morning. We thank you for blessing us this day. We thank you, O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, for all that you do and will do if we put our mind and trust in you. We thank you, O oh, God, also for your Son, Jesus Christ, who went to Calvary's cross for the sins of the world. And when he said it is finished, he gave up his life and went to paradise to Abraham bosom and released all the captives. And when that was done, oh God, he came out of the grave and ascended back to heaven to sit by the right hand of our Father. And the word tell us no one comes to the Father unless they come through Jesus Christ, who is the author and finish of all of our faith, and who sits high and look low and know our going out and our coming in because we all have sin and we all have the sin nature because of Adam and Eve. But we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ. And that we confess our sins, he is just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness because he sits out and he looked low. And he is the general John. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So bless us throughout this day. We don't know what the day holds, but we know who holds the day. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So bless each one of us here this morning. And wherever you may be, that God will bless you. In Jesus' name we pray for Christ's sake. Amen and amen.
set us free. Now we can live in victory. Yes. We can thank God for the victory He has blessed us with. God is so awesome.
scripture text for today is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek out the wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, to the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now when we look at this passage, the first thing we see is that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Okay, so what is this message? What is the message of the cross? Well, in verse 23, Paul says, But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. Paul is explaining here that this message is Christ crucified. Have you ever heard this message? Well, I heard Jesus tell Nicodemus in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We love that message. For God so loved the world. I can make it personal. For God so loved me. For God so loved you. That's a wonderful message. But we often hear the word and walk away and forget. Because didn't the Bible also say something about all of us being sinners? If I remember correctly, Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. You see, we are quick to talk about the love part of the message of the gospel, like for God's love the world. But what about the part about the cross? What about the part where God dies to fix our mess? What about the part where he died for our sin? You see, God took on a body so he could die for you and for me. Jesus died according to the scriptures. I know some of y'all are probably thinking, Pastor Philip, I know Jesus died for my sins. Why are you telling me this again? Because we are prone to walk away from the word and forget and we need to understand and believe that the message of the cross is the power of God because it is God's word that changes us once we put our trust in him. Romans 5 eight says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us. There it is again, God's love. In that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so you're thinking about the love. He, he loves us so much. He actually demonstrates his love. So if we keep reading past the love part, we see how he demonstrated it by his death. Mm, wow. You see, the death was because God can't let sin slide. He can't say, oh, you can go ahead and sin and I'll just die, you good. Somebody had to pay. Somebody had to pay with, with their life. Because he says the wages of sin is death. Now we have to talk about sin and death. And it's not glamorous. I mean, who wants to admit anyway that their all-powerful God had to be killed by the mere men that he was dying for? Okay, let's back up a second. Let's think about God's strategy here. 
Okay, man sinned against God, and the wages of sin is death. So God's plan is to humble himself, become a human, and be obedient unto death, even death on the cross. God's strategy is that you sin against me, and I die for you. Who uses this type of strategy? You got to win to lose. This goes against all winning types of strategy. It doesn't mean that we uh, follow our own way, but we have to follow God's way. This really doesn't really make sense to us. An all-powerful God will become a mere man and die. You see, this is why it seems like foolishness to those who are perishing. It just doesn't make sense. But to those who are being saved, it's the power of God. Why? Because saved people know that this wasn't some half-baked scheme to save us. This was God's plan from the beginning, from before the beginning. With God's power and foreknowledge, he set this plan in motion. You know how sometimes uh, people tell you something that you already know, and you say, man, I knew that from day one. Well, when it comes to God's plan, God actually knew that before day one. We're talking about his foreknowledge here. So not only do we need to understand the message of the cross, we also need to know God's word. This is so we can stop giving our own opinions and strategies to people for their life's problems. People need to know what God says, not our strategies or opinions. Let Jesus be their life coach. Please understand that Jesus is the coach. You know, Jesus' death and resurrection, it wasn't some fourth quarter comeback. This was a winning strategy that he drew up on his clipboard before he even got to the locker room. Jesus not only knew about his death beforehand, he went along with it willingly. You see, he talked about his death before it happened in Luke chapter 18, verses 31 to 34. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked, insulted, spit upon. They will scourge him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them. And they did not know the things which were spoken. In other words, the disciples didn't have a clue. Jesus even arose from the dead. After his death, went back to the disciples and reminded them about this plan again that came from the beginning. In Luke chapter 24, verse 44 through 49, he says, Then he said to them, These are the words in which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that the things must be fulfilled that was written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. So the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, I'm talking about the Old Testament, concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. That's the Old Testament. Then he said to them, thus it is written and thus it is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. That the repentance and remission of sins could be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send my promise from my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So here Jesus explains that this message that sounds like foolishness is the message of the Bible, of the Old Testament. It's Christ crucified. Pay attention to what he says in verse 49 in Luke chapter 24. He says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city.
city of Jerusalem and to you endued with the power from on high. Jesus said that he would send God's promise. And that was the Holy Spirit. What was the Spirit supposed to do? Well, help them to understand the message. So now we understand that the message that sounds like foolishness to unbelievers, it doesn't make sense because the Spirit hasn't explained it to them. It is the power of God or a demonstration of God's power to those who are being saved through it. So now we know that the message, we know what it is. Let's take a closer look at what Paul says about the message here in 1 Corinthians. Back to chapter 1, we're on verse 23 now. He said, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. Okay, now why is this message a stumbling block? to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Well, what is a stumbling block anyway? Well, a stumbling block is something that you trip over because you can't see it. So how is Christ a stumbling block to the Jews? They couldn't see him as the Messiah. Well, he was here living among them, but they rejected him. You <coughs> ever wonder why the Jews rejected Jesus? Jesus didn't give them the sign they wanted to see. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. They asked him for a sign. In John 4, 48, it says, Unless you people, this is what Jesus said to them, Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told them, you will never believe. Jesus didn't come to defeat the Romans like they wanted him to. He didn't come to take over. He didn't come to rule with the iron scepter, which the Old Testament predicts. Because that will happen later. He came for the first part. The part that's not glamorous. The part that don't nobody want to talk about. They want to talk about the love, but they don't want to talk about the cross. You know, we wear these crosses around our neck, symbolizing that we are followers of Christ. But in all actuality, this right here, this symbol of a cross, is really a place of execution. It's like me wearing around an electric chair on my neck. I carry an electric chair. People say, man, you crazy, what you got there right there? That's execution. Well, that's what this cross is. It reminds us that Christ was executed for us. That's why we wear it, as a reminder. Now understand this, and this is very important. If everyone on earth was righteous except for you, if you were the only one that wasn't righteous, Christ would have still came and died for you, because that was his plan from the beginning. But what kind of plan is it? It doesn't seem to make sense. It's God's plan. What about the Gentiles? Why was the message foolishness to them? Well, for the Gentiles, knowledge and wisdom and understanding was the way to go. For them, the message of the cross was too plain, too boring. It was a poor strategy. It was not eloquent. They were interested in everybody's opinion except for God. The problem with the people back then was the same as it is today. We want the preacher to move us with his wonderful words and clever illustrations. Have you ever had this conversation with someone? Man, you should have heard that man preach. Well, what did he say? I don't know. But it sounded good. That's what the church in Corinth was doing. One would say, I follow Paul. The other says, I follow Peter. Unless I follow Apollos, well, I follow Jesus, because I'm spiritual. Their loyalties were divided because they wanted thinkers, people who can move them emotionally. They didn't want the message of the cross. They were more interested in the preacher's personality and presentation than the passage that the preacher was preaching. Whatever happened to believers being encouraged to clearly share the message of the cross, so that others can experience the power of God in their lives. 
You know, here at Mount Olive, we're blessed. We're truly blessed. We have a pastor who not only sounds good, but he rightly divides the word of truth. Amen. He has a great personality and great presentation. And he preaches Bible passages with passion. So I know at this point, you're thinking, okay, pastor, what does God do with me? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me sum it all up. I'm going to sum all this up into three points of application. First of all, we need to understand and believe that the message of the cross is the power of God because it is God's word that changes us once we put our trust in him. Number two, we need to know God's word so we can stop giving our own opinions and strategies to people and start telling them what thus says the Lord. And thirdly, we have to be able to to clearly share the message of the cross with others so they can experience the power of God in their lives. This is what God wants us to do. This is how we're going to make it through these tough times together. Not by grabbing guns and going out and fighting in the streets. But we need to find out God's way. So that's one strategy. But well, what's God's strategy? God wants us to be on our face before him. He wants us to reach out to him and walk in the wisdom of his word and what he tells us to do already. This is how we're going to make it through these tough times. Let's close in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this word you have given Lord, we thank you that you uh, are so powerful and you're so loving. Yes. Yes. Yet, the cross is where you went. Yes. So we didn't have to die. Mm -hmm. Lord, you took our place taking on death in your body mm -hmm. on a cross. Embarrassed, humiliated, spit upon, beaten also we didn't have to die so we didn't have to go through a lifetime of separation from you Lord you love us that much you love us and you demonstrate that love and we thank you Lord we pray that we would be able to continue in your word and read it memorize it study it that we can know you even more that we can draw close to you Lord Lord help us understand discipleship and what it really means Lord we thank you in Christ's name
that teaches the Bible. Get connected. Don't stay out there on your own. Christ forever. 